of Nested Sleep. Thank you so much for joining today. Today I'm going to talk to you about the crib to bed transition. And this is a big one. Usually, hopefully at this point, your child is a pretty good sleeper, um, but this can really throw things off. And so setting yourself up for success here, really thinking it through and being ready and at a good time uh, is really crucial. So we're gonna kind of break this down into three different parts. So first we're gonna talk about your child's development and when to know whether they're ready to transition from a crib to a bed and the reasons why not to do it as well. So we're gonna talk about that development. Then we're gonna talk about their sleep environment. So how to set them up for success from the environmental standpoint and what to change within the room um, from safety and what, how to know like what bed to buy and different things like that. And then we're gonna go into talking about your toolbox and different things that you can have ready uh, to, if these little hiccups come up, you'll know how to nip them in the bud right away. So you won't have to start developing new, not so good sleep habits. You'll be able to grab the things in your toolbox and get going. Okay, so let's talk about the child's development. So at this age, um, there's just there's a lot happening in terms of independence and wanting some control over things. And so you want to make sure you're having one, your bedtime routine is going pretty smoothly to begin with in the crib, because if you have a new environment where they can explore more, they're going to want to push those boundaries. So they need to know not to push the boundaries. They need to have a good routine already in place from a developmental standpoint. So children learn visually very well most of the time. So having either a routine chart, you can download this on my sleep resources, can be really helpful. Um, and you're gonna wanna establish that again before you're transitioning from the crib to the bed. So you're gonna wanna get that good routine in place so then they have something to follow when you do make the jump. So that's one thing to keep in mind. One major thing is that when you're looking at when to transition a child from a crib to a bed, it's not just looking at an age. A lot of the times kiddos get to be like, they're getting close to that third birthday and parents feel this like a little bit of a rush to, to jump and you know make a new room space and they're growing up and it's something fun to look forward to. But if things are going really smoothly and they're content, they're comfortable, they're sleeping well, then you don't need to rush. So don't let society or your other friends or family tell you that they're just too big for a crib. Um, most of the time, the weight limits are, are pretty high on these. So, you know, from that standpoint, of course, check the safety on your particular crib. Uh, but most of the time, that is not reason alone. So if things are going well, don't feel like you need to rush out of it. So other things in terms of development that you're going to want to look into are um, a lot of other things that come into play around age three. So potty training can be one thing that comes into play. And so when you're potty training a child, if you're potty training them on the younger end, so say like they're potty trained at two, two and a half, that alone is not a reason to transition out of the crib. But if your child is closer to three, three and a half, and from a developmental standpoint, um, can physically go to the bathroom on their own during the daytime, uh, then they may be wanting to transition out of a bed because it's actually less disruptive to the household for them to just get up, go to the bathroom, either with a small potty in their room, or if their bathroom is super close by, then they can just do that independently. But if they're not able to do that independently during the day, it's going to become very disruptive for overnight if you're trying to night train at closer to two, two and a half. So generally I recommend waiting for that. And then other things is that, you know, can your child follow simple rules and kind of follow simple routines? Do they know what the next step is? Do they know that when they get into bed, it's time to fall asleep? And are they tired when they're getting into bed? Because if not, then they're gonna want to explore more 
when you're transitioning then to a bed. So that's something that you really want to keep in mind. You know, can they follow some simple rules? Can they follow those routines and steps? Um, because then they're gonna be more likely to know that when they finish the routine, then the lights go out and then they fall asleep. But if there's a lot of game playing and not exactly following the rules when they're already in the crib, then you're gonna to wanna to address those first before transitioning to the bed. So those are kind of things to look for to tell you, are they ready to transition out of a crib? The reasons not to just jump to doing it if a new sibling is coming. So again, if they're content in the crib, but you're like, oh, I kind of need the crib for the new baby, just get a pack and play for the new baby. And don't worry, the baby's going to be usually in the room still for six months to a year with you in a bassinet or pack and play type setup. So don't feel like you need to rush for the crib just for the new baby if your child is like two, two and a half, that type thing. Um, and then another thing you'd want to look for is some people feel like it's ready to transition out of the crib if they're climbing out of the crib, but that is not the case. Usually you want to troubleshoot and work through some things if they're climbing out of the crib, um, such as a sleep sack that you zip up from the back so they can't access it. So that can prevent that leg from going up on the bar. There's a number of different sleep suits out there, sleep sacks out there. Um, it just depends on what kind of keeps your child a little more secure. Another thing that you can do is you can lower the mattress actually all the way to the floor. And so if there's no gap, you can lower that all the way to the floor um, without the bottom spring. And that can give you a little more space for the child not to be climbing over. So again, that depends on the particular setup of your crib, um, but that's something to consider. Those aren't things that you'd want to immediately jump to the bed, try and troubleshoot, and please reach out if you need help with that. Okay, so let's talk about setting up the environment for success and how to know what type of crib or um, bed to transition from the crib. So there's a number of different options. One is that you're going to want to assess your child's physical abilities. So some kids that are on the smaller end um, and you maybe can't climb up and down a large bed, you could consider just a mattress on the floor as a transition from the crib. You don't want your child to have any fear um, around or not being able to get down from the bed itself. So you don't want that fear involved. Um, you don't want them to be intimidated by the new bed. You also can just add a rail. So you may have seen there's options to either add an add-on type rail or sometimes the crib itself will come with a toddler rail. So again, they're used to the same sleep space and for some kiddos that can provide some comfort because the bed doesn't look all that much different. Um, now some people, if the crib does not have a built-in toddler rail, it didn't come with it, then you're buying a new bed. So you're like, well, should I just buy a queen bed um, versus a toddler bed because it's only going to last so long? So generally I would say yes in the long term. You're not going to want to, if your crib does not come with a toddler rail, just buying a toddler bed is, is going to be a pretty short term thing. So most toddler beds you would only use for a year or two before transitioning either to a twin size bed or a queen size bed. And so in this case, um, you sometimes again would just put the mattress on the floor and then not get a frame for it until the child is a little bit older. Um, or sometimes you can opt to not have a box spring and so that would bring it lower to the ground. Again, that lower to the ground is key and so it's not so much that they're not falling out of bed because honestly your child should not be falling out of bed and move that much during the night. Um, that could actually mean that there's something medical going on or something that's causing them to move a lot during sleep. Generally, they should be pretty calm during sleep time and not be falling out of bed. But it's more of that intimidation factor. So you don't want them to have any fear involved. So low to the ground is key there. So that's kind of your sleep environment. Now, if a child is 
younger and transitions out of the bed, usually less than three, then I usually do recommend putting a gate on the door. Again, creating a boundary. You're going to want, they just naturally want to explore during this age. And so having that boundary is really important. And then also making sure that the room is safe. So there's not a lot going on in the room. There's not a ton of toys. There's, the dressers are secured to the walls. There's not a lot of things to climb on. You're gonna make sure you know all your outlets are plugged up and stuff like that. So safety is really important. So that's your environment. And then let's move on to the fun part, your toolbox, okay? So again, we talked about having a good routine and visual for that. Um, you're also going to want to hype up this change a little bit, um, get them excited for it. So looking at some different books that you can talk to them about transitioning to the bed, um, really talk about this exciting part of that. And then also having them, you know, pick out some of their favorite bedding, really getting them involved in the process. So some other things you can have in your toolbox. So if the child is older than usually around three and a half, sometimes depending on maturity, a little bit younger, if they start to explore and come out of the room, you want to quickly be able to stop them because you want them to know that that's not where the boundary ends. Like they have to stay in their room. You don't want them coming all the way to your room and you having to lock them back every single time. Um, so a couple things to do that. Again, we talked about the gate for the younger kiddos. For kiddos that are, are a little bit older, you can use something called a toddler monitor can be really helpful if your child is very frequently coming out. Because again, you want to be able to catch them right away and just tell them, nope, you gotta go back in your room very calmly. Um, so this hooks onto the doorknob and will alert your phone when they come out of the room. So again, very quickly bring them right back to their room. Not a lot of drama, just you directing them back to their sleep space. And then also, if they're kind of doing what I call curtain calls, coming out very frequently saying, oh, I need to go to the bathroom again, despite having just gone, or I need another sip of water, or I need another 10th hug, <laughs> things like that, um, then you can implement what's called a bedtime pass. And this, again, is on my um, website under free resources. So bedtime pass, they would, if they can keep this pass till the morning, then they can get a small prize or a sticker. Or if they do need to turn it in, they only get the one pass and they gotta turn it in to get that one more hug or one more sip of water and then they're done. Um, and so that can be really helpful. Just again, something visual to really tell them um, something they can feel and hold that can be really helpful. Okay, so hopefully this was really helpful in getting you ready and understanding when to transition your child from a crib to a bed.